when you when you were first hired, one of the things you talked about that I totally agreed with was how for stolen bases to make sense, you got to be up over seventy percent success rate. The last two years, though, we've been more in the low sixties than the low sixties. What's going wrong there? Do you think? We just don't have the guys uh, with that blazing speed uh, to have that success rate. I mean, uh, we have to be honest. I mean, I, I told people over and over and over that talked about that we don't run enough. Well, if you if you bring me Jose Reyes and Hanley Ramirez and Willie Taveras and uh, and uh, Niger Morgan Pittsburgh, I'd run you out of the ballpark because I know that those guys can run and, and they'll make it. And uh, you just got to be, you know, I'm very optimistic, but you got to be realistic too. We just don't have them here. Um, most of the guys that can run a little bit in our club, they have had green lights in some here. That's that's the way I manage. I give the guys green light, but. You know, it just to me it doesn't make any sense to be running just so 30,000 people are saying, well, he's aggressive. Yeah, but guys are getting thrown out left and right. And there's 27 outs and they're precious. And um, I know that you guys being involved in what you do, you, you do a lot of research and stuff, but the, the average guy at home still doesn't go out of his way to understand that just running into outs is not, it's not good. You just don't run to run, you just don't bunt to bunt. You, you run and you bunt when it makes sense, and that's, that's the way I do things. Um, I don't think we have the guys right now in our ball club to, uh, and, you know, to, to have three or four guys say that they can steal 30, 40 bases, to be honest with you. And, uh, and so you have to, to manage accordingly to what you have. You know, if I had those guys that I just mentioned to you, we're probably gonna be running crazy. I don't have them, so I really have to uh, take care of those 27 outs. I uh, really rely a lot on scouting reports and my, my stopwatch and when do we have a really chance to, to be safe and we steal and hit and run and stuff. This team this year is different than the one last year offensively. Last year I could do pretty much nothing when it comes down to running because last year if you had Ryan Zimmerman hitting third and most of the year we had Lassie Millich hitting fourth or Jesus Flores. If you, let's say, you bunt Guzman and have a guy move over to second base, now they're not going to pitch to Zimmerman. They're just going to walk him and, and deal with one of the rookie guys. Same thing doing with the hit and run stuff. If you're hit and run in, you know, Zimmerman or last in last year, then those are the only bats you have in the lineup and you're forcing them to swing the bat whatever the pitch is. So it's not only me. I, I think every manager in the big leagues, they're probably just uh, manage according to the what they have. Chico Matt Chico is doing very well. He actually pitched well yesterday uh, in A ball, and uh, that's another thing that you know it's uh, it's looming for us in the future is that when Chico's ready, um, we're gonna have to monitor his innings too, uh, and we're gonna have to make uh, the decision of are we gonna let him just keep on pitching this year and use those innings, or are we gonna monitor him better and then you know allow him to come to camp next year ready to go if you ask him obviously he will want to be here and 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 our our goal is probably to have him to be one of those guys late in the year that can come over and uh, and take take over some of these kids that we're gonna shut down and uh, we do have a, a good good group of guys down there that could probably you know fit that description be Ballister, be Chico if he, you know, finishes his rehab and, and he's strong. And uh, Mark, who's starting now and throwing the ball well down there. So um, that's that's encouraging to me. Probably only have time for one How about Jesus Flores? I got time. <laughs> I know, we got other points. How about Jesus Flores? Uh, when do we expect to see him? Um, we've been... We really don't want to put pressure on flow and really don't want to mention any dates. You know, I think the safest date uh, to see Flores will be September. But if you start dropping dates on him, he might push himself a little bit and uh, we don't want that because we know how, how valuable he is to, uh, to us, not only for, for this year, for, for years to come. So uh we don't even talk about him coming back that's why it's not even out there and you know and we miss him dearly because right, uh, one more real play. quick somebody yes where you walked in and adam dunn talked about how he thinks you guys are turning uh, not his words but turning the corners trying to play better defense better pitching and that you're fine for a good second half how do you feel about that 
Well, I feel uh, he, he's been, you know, very positive about that. And he does it month to month, and uh, you know, he fits what, what we preach over here. And uh, it's not a secret. I mean, none of us were anticipating this to happen. Uh, now, let's be clear on something here. Um, spring training sometimes is not the best time to judge uh, different things. For instance, I was talking to some of our beat writers earlier in the week. When you're in spring training and uh, our outfielders play five innings or six, and you win in the ball game and those guys don't play the full amount of, of innings, and then you take those guys out of the game, and then you put Bernardina and Maxwell and Corey Patterson back there, and everybody catches a five ball and the game is over, you don't get to see what we've been able to see this, this, uh, this season. The, the, the problem that we have defensively. And that's something that, you know, spring training is not a good time to judge. But that being said, you cannot throw everybody out there for nine innings from day one in spring training. Uh, I think everybody knows um, that we had had some defensive problems overall. Um, I think uh, if any one of you guys gets really familiar and comes around and the beat writers or whoever are around knows that it is not because of lack of work, because uh, I challenge you to get any team in the major leagues to take more infield than we do and to work on fundamentals uh, like we do. But that being said, things things haven't worked out, and, and sometimes you know it goes farther than than the work habits, and uh, so we just need to keep on working and. Hopefully we can realign everything and things start to get better. Um, never anticipated this to happen. Never. And uh, if you look at what's going on, some of the guys that haven't played good defense are supposed to be good defensive players too. So I don't know, I'll give you one more as a, as a bonus. I'll ask you a question. Yeah. You've seen Ryan Zerman for three years, six months out of every year. From 2007 to now, what's the difference in other than just, you know, what do you see as and, and his game, uh, it's, it's maturity overall, Jeff. It's, it's maturity overall in, uh, in, in every part of his game. Uh, I think he's, uh, even right now when he's scuffling a little bit at the plate, it's, it's, it's his patient at the plate. Because when I first got over here in 2007, uh, we, I talked to Ryan over and over and over how he used to fall into the opposition's plan. Okay, they they try to take away his power by just throwing the ball low and away. We were playing an RFK. He you know he felt he could still handle it. Hit a long fly ball in RFK that was an out. Um, in his defense, the first two years that he that that I was here, he didn't have any any real uh, you know fearful guy hitting behind him that could protect him. So he felt like a lot of times he had to do it. So now he's his patient. Now he walks more. He uh, uh, he, he doesn't fall so much into the pitcher's plan and going the other way, certain counts. Also, uh, when it comes to his personality, he seems to me the same. I mean, I've never seen anybody so mature for, you know, for that age. And that's something that we keep talking to him about, you know, if he needs to be more vocal or if he needs to be, you know, more in charge of certain things. Uh, feel free because I've never been around anybody that young that command that much respect. Okay, guys.